Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we will understand what is common method bias in structural equation modeling. Common method bias can occur when both the independent and dependent variables are measured within one survey using the same response method. That is a common response method. Normally, when ordinal scales are used. Indeed, this is very often the case and thus there have been extensive discussion in various research fields on how to recognize, avoid and control for common method bias. The presence of common method bias can lead to spurious relationship between the variables and result in inflated or distorted fighting. It can undermine the validity and reliability of research outcomes. For instance, Let's say participants who generally have a positive attitude towards fruits tend to rate taste, appearance and nutritional value higher for all fruits, regardless of the specific characteristics of each fruit. This common positive bias in responses can create a misleading impression of stronger relationship among the measured variable that is taste, appearance, nutrition value than what actually exists. As a result, the SAM analysis may overestimate the impact of these variables on food root preference, leading to bias conclusions. Four reasons for common bias method are 1. Method effects 2. Social desirability bias 3. Common rater bias 4. Temporal effects Method effects The method effects used to collect data can introduce biases, for example, using Likert scale or responses or response categories that are poorly defined or ambiguous may lead to response patterns that are not entirely accurate or consistent. The example of method effect is a halo effect. The halo effect is a method effect observed in research studies where an individual overall impressions of the person, product or entity influences their perception of specific traits or qualities related to that entity. In the context of smartphone study, using a single overall rating scale for participants to rate their satisfaction with the smartphone can introduce the halo effect. If a participant have a positive overall impression about the smartphone, then they may rate each specific feature that is design, performance, battery life and camera quality more favorably, regardless of their actual quality. Conversely, if the participants have a negative overall impression, they may rate each feature lower than they otherwise would have done actually. Mitigation of the method effects To mitigate the method effects and to obtain more accurate assessments, researchers can use separate skills or measures to evaluate each specific feature individually. By doing so, participants' perception of individual features can be evaluated without confounding the influence of an overall impression. Social desirability bias Participants may be inclined to respond in a way that aligns with the social norms or what they believe the researcher wants to hear rather than providing the genuine and honest responses. For instance, in a study asked parents, in a study asking parents about their involvement in their children's education, parents may overstate their level of involvement, claiming they frequently help them with their homework attend parent-teachers meeting and engage in en enriching activities. They might do so to align themselves with the social, social expectations of being actively involved in their children's education. Mitigation of social desirable bias. Collecting the anonymous or confidential responses. Providing participants with an anonymous or confidential environment encourages them to be more honest and reduces their fear of judgment or negative consequences for, for providing socially undesirable responses. Instead of asking questions directly related to sensitive topics or socially desirable behaviors, researchers can use more indirect or subtle approaches to gather information. This can help minimize participants' awareness of the desired response and reduce the inclination to provide socially desirable answers. Common Rater Bias In cases where multiple measures are noted by the same person, example, a supervisor rating an employee's performance on various dimensions, the rater's perception or biases may influence the ratings across the different variables. One example of common rater bias is the leniency bias. 
Leniency bias refers to the tendency for raters to consistently rate individuals or objects more positively or leniently than they deserve. Than they deserve. It occurs when the rater consistently assigns higher scores or ratings across various evaluations regardless of the actual performance or quality being assessed. For instance, imagine a performance review system in a company where a manager evaluates the employee's job performance. If a manager has a leniency bias, they may consistently rate their employees higher than their actual performance if what it is. Even if their employees who are underperforming or need improvement, the lenient rater will provide positive evaluations, potentially inflating the overall performance scores. Leniency bias can have several consequences, including inaccurate performance assessments, difficulty in identifying areas for improvement, and potential disparities in rewards and promotions. It can also create a perception of unfairness among employees who may feel that their efforts and accomplishments are not being actually accurately recognized or rewarded. To mitigate the leniency bias, organizers can provide rater, rater training and clear evaluation criteria to ensure consistent and objective assessments. Calibration sessions can be conducted to align raters' perception and interpretations of performance standards. Additionally, using multiple raters or implementing a force distribution system can help to balance out biases and provide more accurate representation of individual performance. This is how we mitigate the common rate bias. Temporal effects. Temporal effects refers to the influence of time-related factors on the research outcomes. These effects can arise due to changes in participants' attitudes, behavior, or circumstances over the time. Here are a few examples of it. 1. Maturation. In longitudinal studies or repeated measures design, Participants may naturally undergo development changes or maturation over time. For example, in a study measuring cognitive abilities in children over several years, improvements in cognitive functions may be attributed for the normal maturation process rather than specific interventions or treatment being examined. Practice effect. With repeated testing or exposure to a task or measurement, participants can experience a practice effect. This refers to the improvements in performance due to the increased familiarity or skill acquisition. For instance, in a study evaluating the effectiveness of a memory training program, participants may show better performance on subsequent assessments simply because they have become more proficient at the specific memory task. Carryover effects. Carryover effects can, be, can occur when the effects of previous condition or treatment persist and influence subsequent conditions, on, subsequent conditions on the measurements. For example, in a within-subjects experimental design where the participants receive different interventions or treatment, the effects of one condition may carry over and influence the responses or outcomes of subsequent conditions. Mitigation of temporal effects. You can mitigate the temporal effects by randomization and counterbalancing. Random assignment of participants to different conditions and counterbalancing the order of conditions can help to minimize the impact of temporal effects. By randomly assigning participants, researchers distribute potential time-related factors evenly across the groups, reducing the influence of confounding variables. Counterbalancing the order of condition ensures that any order effects are evenly distributed among participants. You can use a longitudinal design to mitigate the temporal effects. In longitudinal de design, where data is collected from the same participants over an extended period can help account for temporal effects. By measuring the participants' response at multiple time, po time points, researchers can analyze changes over the time, allowing for more accurate understanding of the underlying process and mitigating the impact of confounding factors. Control Groups Including control groups in an experimental design helps distinguish the effects of time-related factors from the specific interventions or treatment being examined. By comparing the outcomes of the intervention group to those of a control group, researchers can identify the unique effects of the treatment while controlling for the temporal factors. Statistical techniques Researchers can employ statistical techniques to account for temporal effects. For example, 
Analyzing data using multi-level modeling or growth curve modeling can help model and account for individual growth trajectories over the time. This technique can provide insights into the specific temporal effects and enable the separation of true treatment effects from the influence of the treatment. Common bias methods can contribute to the presence of common method variance. Biases introduced by the measurement or assessment method can potentially inflate the correlations or relationships observed among the variables, thus amplifying the common method variance in the data. The goal of testing for such common method variance is to determine to what degree any such biases exist. We describe three frequently used techniques to estimate common method variance. 1. Hermann single factor. 2. Common Latin factor. 3. Common marker variable. In Hermann single factor, the basic idea behind the Hermann single factor test is to examine whether a single common factor can account for a substantial amount of the covariance among the measured variables or not. If a single factor explains a large proportion of the covariance, it suggests the presence of common method variance, which could be due to response biases or methodological factors rather than substantive constructs being measured. To conduct the Hermann single factor test in AMOS, you would typically create a measurement model where all the observed variables from your questionnaire are loaded onto a single latent factor. This latent factor represents the common method variance. If the single factor accounts for a significant amount of covariance among the variables, it suggests the presence of common method variance. This new factor is typically not in the researcher's model. It is introduced solely for this analysis and then discarded. If the newly introduced common latent factor explains more than 50% of the variance, then the common method bias may be present. If newly introduced model has a proper model fit and various indices are all about, the threshold limits, then we can say that the model is suffering from common method bias. The loyalty here has been captured with the help of statements S1, S2, S3, S4. Satisfaction has been captured with the statements T1, T2, T3 and T4. To implement the Hermann single factor, what we will do is, we will load all the statements on a single factor. This is known as hum Hermann single factor. Now, how to carry out the common method bias in SPSS? Let's see. So, this is our data set. We'll go in Analyze, Dimension Reduction, Factor. So, let's see the original uh, model. Tangibility has been captured with the help of four statements, T1 to T4. Reliability has been captured with the four statements. Responsiveness has been captured with four statements. Assurance has been captured with four statements and the empathy. This, this is the same data set which is there in the SPSS file. You can see here. Now what I'll do is I'll load all the statements on the right hand side. Is JS5 there in the original model? Let us check. No, JS5 is not there. So let us go back and remove JS5 from here. This one. Okay. Now go in extraction. Now make it sure that you write here one factor. Yes, we want the extraction to be done only on one factor. Why we are doing this? The reason is that is one factor able to explain the variance which is more than 50%? If it is there, then our model is suffering from common method bias. I repeat again, we are extracting only single factor or in other words, all these items are getting loaded on one single factor and it's having an variance more than 50%. If it is more than 50%, then our uh, model is suffering from common method bias. Continue. Click on rotation, go in very max. Continue. Uh, click on options, make sure it is sorted by size, suppress small coefficients and make this 0.4. Continue. Click OK. Done. Now directly go into the total variance explained. You can see here that the total variance explained is 33%. 
which is reasonably less than 50%. This clearly means that our model does not suffer from common method bias. Now, same thing we can do also in MS. Let's go in the MS. This model, the original structural equation model, will be replaced by the Hermann single factor. You can see here, only one factor we have used and all these statements are loaded on the single factor. Now, if this single factor, if the model fit is okay and the model fit indices are okay, then we will say that it is suffering from common bias method. So let's run it. Let's go in the model fit. Click here. Your model fit has turned up as is 7.233, which is very high than three. And therefore we will say that this model is not fitting properly to the data set. Moreover, you can see the indices also, NFI, RFI, IFI, TLI, they are reasonably less than the less than 0.9. Moreover, you see the RMSEA, it has exceeded and it has gone above 0 0.08. So this is also not good. Now, instead of this, if you run the original model, this one, and if you get the good result, it means that our model does not suffer from common method bias. Let us run it. Go into view text. Go in the model fit. Quite good. It is reasonably less than 3. You see NFI, RFI, IFI, they are all nearer to 0.9. And you see RMSA, which is less than 0 0.08. So our conclusion is that our model is not suffering from common method bias. So this was all about common method bias in SPSS MOS. For more videos on SPSS MOS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please. Uh, refer my playlist in which I already uploaded many videos on SPSS MS. Don't forget to subscribe the channel.